So let's first understand what is panel data. You might have heard about uh, time series data and cross section data. So let me give examples of time series data and cross section data. The time series data looks like this. You have got the stock price of uh, a particular stock uh, over a period of time, continuous period of time. So you have got stock price for 1st December, for 2nd December, 3rd December and 4th of December. So you have stock price data for 4 consecutive days. So that's time series because it has data for different time periods and you know the difference between the consecutive time period is constant because it is only one day difference data right so this is called time series data so what is cross section data in cross section data you won't have the time component so here is an example we have got data for different cities in united states uh, for a particular uh, year, let's say the year is 2014. So for 2014, we have got data for, for three cities, Florida, California and New York. We have got the uh, you know population in millions, average income, percentage educated and then the rainfall. Okay, so we have got data for different cities for a for a uh, for a single uh, time period and that's important single time period okay so in cross section data you will have data for different cross sections only for a uh, one time period okay whereas in time series you have only one uh, you have only one kind of data for instance here we have the stock price but for different time periods. So that's the difference between time series and cross section data. Now what is panel data? Well panel data is just some kind of a combination. The way if you combine time series aspect and the uh, uh, cross section aspect of data then we uh, get a panel data. So let's take an example to understand. So here is an example. So remember in the last slide we talked about a data set which has got uh, information about different cities in United States. So we've got data for Florida, California and New York. Uh, so we've got data for population, average income, percentage educated, rainfall and we've got another uh, column here which is time. Remember in the previous slide we talked about the cross section data which has got data for only 2014. But here we have got the same data for 2015 as well. Now here we have data for two years. Okay. Two years. Or in general we have got data for multiple years. Okay. Or more than one year. So in that case we call this as a panel data. Because we have got cross section data for multiple years. Now this is our cross section data. So this is the data that we had in the previous slide so this is the cross section and this gets repeated for 2015 as well and you can extend to 2016 and, and so on you can also go you know go uh, to 2013 12 11 and 10 and you know that con uh, that that is panel data uh, for for the three different cities now what is the main feature of panel data? Well the main feature of panel data is that it has got cross section component and it has also got time series component. The same cross section gets repeated over time. Okay, The values will of course change but the same cross section. So we have got three, um, three cities right. So we have got data for the same three uh, cities for the next year as well. So it combines both cross section and time series is known as panel data. So we learn about analyzing such a data and how it is different from cross section. Why can't we use the cross section techniques, techniques used for cross section data analysis in panel data analysis in, in detail. So please be with us. Okay, let's move on. Panel 
data can be categorized into two types. One is balanced panel data and the other one is unbalanced panel data. So what is a balanced panel data? If you look at the right hand side of the uh, data set, so this one. So this is the one that we have taken the, from the previous slide. Okay, so this is called balanced panel. Why? Because we have got data for the three cross sections. And then we have got data for the, exactly the three cross sections without missing out on any one of them. But what if, if we miss out on just you know at least one of them? And that becomes unbalanced panel data. If you look at the left hand side of the data, you see that we have got data for Florida, California, but the data for New York is missing. Whereas we have got the data for New York for 2015, but for 2014, the data for new work is missing. So this is called unbalanced where you know you have different cross section. It's, the, it's not the same set of cross sections which are getting repeated for the next year. It is a different set of cross section which is there for the next year. So if any one of these uh, is missing which often happens in uh, panel data analysis where you know we, we could uh, come across cases where we have got missing data that becomes unbalanced panel data and the analysis used for balance and unbalanced uh, panel data uh, panel data is different in some sense in this particular session we will talk mostly about the uh, balanced panel data so what are the uh, important uh, features of panel data which uh, makes it uh, different from the ordinary data or data which is not panel data uh, you know for instance of uh, the cross section data well the panel data allows the control over variables we cannot observe or measure okay and we'll we'll understand this so what is that we cannot observe okay in great detail so what happens is that uh, in panel data if you take the example from the previous slide, we have got population for a particular city, let's say Florida. Okay, so we have got 10 million, and then the next year the population for Florida is 12 million. So not only we are uh, we are having the data for Florida for a particular year, we are having it for different years. So we know the trend that is there in this particular data. So we have two advantage of having panel data. We have got trained, okay, within the variable, okay, and we have also got variation across variables, okay. So that is a combination of the the features of panel, uh, the features of uh, cross section and time series, and that makes it interesting to analyze. And some of the aspects of uh, research. Uh, require your data to be you know time variant and at the same time uh, you know having uh, you know some sort of cross section features as well uh, some of the uh, un unobserved uh, you know components which which do not uh, get captured in uh, cross section analysis uh, are like I like the examples like culture and ethical okay now sub, uh, for instance if you are uh, doing analysis of a population data you are doing an analysis of a population data for a particular uh, particular year let's say 2014 you wouldn't be able to find out how you know certain aspect of the population is changing over time okay for instance the cultural aspect the ethical aspect you know if you do a analysis for 20 years let's say you're doing an analysis from 85 to 2000 uh, you know 15 so you're doing analysis for 30 years a lot of things would have changed about the population people uh, aren't the same uh, what they used to be 30 years ago so there, there are a certain aspect of the population that changes over time okay so that can only be captured in a panel data analysis and not in a cross-section data analysis and that's one of the important feature of 
panel data. It also uh, accounts for the individual heterogeneity. Okay, that means how within the individual, uh, you know, things change. For instance, how uh, you know the population is changing over time for Florida, and how it is changing for New York. Okay, so one can compare how Florida is, you know, uh, the certain uh, you know, certain feature of the state uh, Florida is changing over time compared to New York. So the comparison is also possible in panel data. How do we analyze panel data? Okay, is it the same that uh, we normally use for cross section? So important thing is that it has got both the uh, features time series and cross section so the question here is can we use the ordinary least square can we use the OLS okay and what are the problems that one might face uh, uh, by applying uh, the ordinary least square regression uh, in doing the analysis okay now there is going to be problems okay uh, there are there are uh, problems using uh, OLS in panel data analysis. Okay, not always though, but um, there are there are instances where you will have problems. And one of the main reason why you will have problems is because you know you will have correlated uh, errors. We'll talk about it. Uh, and you know when there are correlated errors, correlated error terms. Okay, now you might wonder why the errors are correlated in panel data. We'll talk about it. Okay, if they're correlated errors, then this will violate some of the assumption of OLS, and you know that's something uh, to be taken care. Uh, very, uh, you know, very see, uh, uh, carefully. Otherwise, um, there is going to be issue. A typical OLS model looks something like this: y i is equal to you know the estimates a plus b xi plus error term whereas a model uh, form for panel data looks like this yit so the extra component or the extra thing here is the time component so i stands for the cross section t stands for the time series so let's go both the components right for instance, in our example, I stands for here the uh, cities, New York, Florida, and so on. And time stands for different time period, 2014, 2015, and so on. Okay. Now, in this particular case, you will see that the errors will most likely to be correlated for a particular cross section. If you take the population, the population for Florida over time over 2014 2015 2016 uh, and you know even before that you will you'll most likely find the population to be very correlated among themselves right hence the error term are also most likely to be correlated and that is an issue in OLS okay so either that has to be corrected before using OLS or you can use alternative technique we'll see how we can deal with this problem and how we can overcome this problem while doing panel data analysis and yes so for that we'll take a case we'll take a simple case so what we're trying to do here is we're trying to predict uh, or we are trying to rather understand the relationship between the salaries of employees um, with different covariates or different independent variables okay the independent variables are the experience of uh, the employee the projects the number of projects that the employee has uh, you know taken up in his career and the education number of years of education the employee has now these are the three covariates and we have got the logarithm of salary logarithm of salary as the dependent variable so this is the dependent variable and the independent variable variables are experience projects and education okay so we will have 
a model like this right there will be three estimates and you know we have the uh, experience then projects and then education okay all right so the model will look like this now question uh, is why do we take a logarithm of salary instead of salary well in some research people take logarithm of uh, certain variables so as to uh, you know have a better model uh, and one of the reason they take is to reduce the variance um, you know that's one of the reason and there are other reasons as well okay um, so we've taken the logarithm of salary as the dependent variable and we've got three independent variables so this data is available for different time periods okay and we have got uh, different employees so for employee id 1 we have got data for 7 years right if you look at this data employee id 1 we have got data for time point 1 time point 2 time point 3 4 5 6 and 7 so for 7 um, con uh, 7 uh, consecutive years we have got the uh, data for for the employee Alright, now how do we uh, build a model? Okay, remember the model that we are trying to build here. We are trying to have a regression model which explains that, uh, explains the relationship between the factors like experience, pro number of projects, and number of years of education with salary. So, what we are trying to know here is the marginal effect like how experience uh, uh, impact the salary of someone. Um, we're also trying to know the relationship in terms of the sign, whether it has a positive effect or negative effect and so on. Pretty much similar to the multiple linear regression, just that the structure of the data is different in this case.